Grizzlies versus Utah, a game that they got run ruled 8-0 versus the last place Utes. They've got some hitting to do. Kinsley Washington set to start it off for the Bruins. Strike called by Eddie Cooper, our home plate umpire. Right off the top, you can see Washington smile a little bit. Kind of unique to see a first pitch of the game be a changeup, but that's the go-to pitch for Lindsey Lopez. And I expect a lot of those today. Foul back. Washington, the redshirt senior out of Whittier, California, and LaSalle High School. One of five seniors on this UCLA squad. They know what this weekend means, says Kelly Inouye Perez, who talked to both you and I before this game. And what she doesn't want him to do is press. O2 pitch fell back. Yeah, three seniors at the top of the lineup for the Bruins with Washington, Perez, and Wiz leading the way. And Washington, really nice to see her back at the top of the lineup. Has been kind of in and out of the lineup all season long because she's had a, a hand injury that she got against Arizona, I believe that was the series. And so sidelined her a little bit, and she's just such a huge bat. But I love to see her back at the top. Injuries is something that UCLA has become very friendly with during the course of this year, trying to move the chess pieces around so they could actually fill healthy bodies given you know, COVID protocols and injuries. Kelly, in a way, Perez has had to get creative this year. It's just a, a luxury that she has in the versatility of her players. So many different positions and, and the depth in the bench. The 0-2 pitch, ball outside. And Washington a triple threat. You see her show her slap there, able to swing away, go to her short game, and drag bun as well. You love that versatility at the top of the lineup. 16th season for Kelly and away Perez at the top of the Bruins, former alum. Ball also fouled back. It is a race to the Pac-12 title between the first and second place team. Arizona State in first right now, UCLA in second. Mm, I mean, it's going to be must-see TV all weekend long with this series. Just so excited to be a part of this and watch these teams go at it. Ground ball to right. That's Sid Sanders who will glove it for the first out of the inning. Sid Sanders, that for fantastic freshman phenom, has really developed her glove at first base. Provides some of that good defense for the Sun Devils. That'll bring up the hot-hitting Brianna Perez. Perez, the red shirt senior out of Martinez, California. And so far, Lopez has been working Washington and that first pitch there to Perez. Every single pitch, whether it's something hard or her off speed has been away. This UCLA lineup has six left-handed hitters. There's a bunt laid down. Throw to first, got her! Jessica Puck coming out from behind catcher's box to get Brianna Perez by a step. I think Jessica Puck is in the running for defensive player in the year for the Pac-12 conference. She's been dynamite in her lone season for Arizona State. That's a tough play for her to come out and throw a strike because of how good Bree Perez runs down the line. She's incredibly quick. That was almost as good a bun as you're gonna see. Delaney Wiz, the redshirt senior out of Orcutt, California, takes ball one. Transfer from LMU, her sister played for UCLA and she decided after a couple years at LMU, she crossed town and Put on a Bruin uniform, and they are sure glad she did. Seeing a lot of change ups here in first inning by Lindsay. You're, yeah, you're going to see one or two about her at least. Strike call. Very rarely does she elevate. 
going up with her rise. She does have it, she can show it, but it's not her main game plan. It's just side to side, keep the ball low, and then offset hitters with that change. Trisha Ford at the helm of Arizona State. I got to think she is in the running for this year's Pac-12 Coach of the Year. You bet. She is such a student of the game. When we called her, what was she, watching film? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Coaches are always watching film, probably have it on their phones, walking around the grocery store. <laughs> Just a lifestyle. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Delaney Woods. Got her, strike three. Three up, three down. Chart in the Pac-12 when you look. She was a top 25 finalist for college player of the year. They've whittled that down, but she has one of the best ERAs and first in opponent batting average in the Pac-12. Faces Alina Torres, who's set to lead it off. The junior out of Glendale, Arizona. This Arizona State team outscored Cal in a three-game series last week, 31 to eight. There is a long ball, and that is gone! A leadoff home run by Alina Torres to put the Sun Devils up 1-0 in the bottom of the first. Her 13th home run on the season. Second pitch, and this offense is already making a statement. You can see Torres, she was off of the plate against Faramo. This is a backdoor curve that doesn't go in enough to the right-handed hitter in Torres. And you see that ball go dead center. She's fired up. I love watching Torres in that leadoff spot because she's not your typical leadoff batter, but she has such a presence about her. And nothing more than starting this type of series off with a home run. The icebreaker, Yanni Acuna, steps in, the senior out of Tucson, Arizona, trying to follow that act. In fact, Acuna, Torres, and Sanders all had home runs against Cal in game three. Looked like an off speed to the right side. Washington gloves it foul. How in the circle do you mentally get back from a leadoff long ball? Yeah, giving up a leadoff home run is, is tough, right? It's one thing to give it up at the first inning, but the very first batter kind of takes your breath away a little bit, like, whoa, okay. And you're going to have to dial it in really quick. If anything, it's just a wake-up call for Faramo. That ball is up but foul. And we've got almost a full house here at Farrington Stadium. Oh, it's packed. It's standing room only. Some people are still coming in a little late, but seats are hard to find right now. Here's the 0-2 pitch outside. The first five hitters in the Sun Devils lineup are double-figure home runs. The on-deck hitter, Sid Sanders, leads the team with 17. In the dirt. Trisha Ford likes what Acuna is doing this year. This is really her first season playing every game. And she says English is not her first language, so they really broke the sport and the swing down. She has responded in great fashion. Got her. Strikeout number one for Megan Faramo. And I love the response there from Faramo. You give up the home run, you may be thinking, okay, I need to keep the ball down. But she goes to her rise ball, and that's her bread and butter pitch. Just shows that she's confident in it. Attack Acuna up through the zone. Get the big out. Freshman Sid Sanders steps in out of San Marcos, California, and San Marcos High School. She is up for top freshman of the year. And boy, what a show did she put on last week versus Cal. 
she elevated so much so she's now the top hitter on the team in average and long balls. It's been so fun to watch her all season long. I was able to call her very first weekend, called her first career home run here at Farrington in the Kajikawa Classic, and she's just been steady Eddie for this team. That ball is to the right side. Sanders makes a big turn, but she'll stay at first. Sid Sanders is a one-out base runner. Well, yes, she has 17 home runs, but you talk about her batting average as a three-hole hitter hitting 434, sits on this changeup. I'm just so excited for this youngster and her future. Behind Megan Faramo is Gooden, Brady, and Kuro in the outfield. Wiz is at third, not behind uh, the catching box. Perez, Vines, Washington, and Alyssa Garcia is the catcher. As Jasmine Hill fouls off that first pitch. Hilda Jr. out of Norwalk, California. Now having Garcia back consistently for UCLA is a big deal. Has been in and out of the lineup like we've been talking about. One of those players dealing with some injuries for the Bruins this season. And it's a big difference to have her back there because it allows Delaney Wiz, who's been having to pick up some of the slack behind the plate, allows her to play third base. She's so good over there, the senior is, defensively. And it just makes UCLA stronger as a whole. Faremo is ahead of Jasmine Hill. 0-2. Got her. Second strikeout of the game for Megan Faremo. And her 231st strikeout on the season to lead the Pac-12. This is as good a rise ball as you're going to see. It has that up movement, but it also has that in movement. So it's kind of like that screw rise, a scries, if you will. When you're throwing a pitch for a strikeout and a strikeout count, if you can get a pitch to break two different ways, that's how you want to draw it up. The number five hitter, Jasmine Rollin, the DH takes strike one. Rollin, a junior out of Salt Lake City, Utah, transferred from Missouri. She also had a home run against Cal in game two. The game Arizona State won 13 to five in five innings. that heat from Faremo. Yeah, the location is going to be key for her, that rise ball, because Arizona State, they're coming in wanting to swing every time they're in the box. And they want to hit it up and they want to hit it far, and they're looking for that rise ball. She threw it again. Third strikeout this inning, but not before. The number four hitter for the UCLA Bruins steps in, Maya Brady. Brady, the redshirt sophomore at 1,000 Oaks, California. And Maya Brady, a hitter for UCLA that they're just kind of waiting patiently to see her get going consistently because She's such a good hitter. Keeping her in the four hole for good reason. That ball to the right side, giving it a chase, and she got it. Yanni Acuna. A long run down to get that foul ball. And gets the first down of the inning. In a series like this, you have to have those plays. And look where Acuna started out in right field. She covers so much ground here. This is a good a diving catch as you're going to see an outfielder make. She's got the shades on, fighting the sun. 
Down there in foul territory. Big time grab. Alyssa Garcia goes after pitch one. The sophomore lefty is in the catcher spot today for the Bruins. Garcia, the redshirt sophomore at a Chula Vista High School, Matter Day Catholic High School. Fouls that down the right side. And you look at UCLA, and they came out of the season like gangbusters. And really have, since they faced Stanford, they had a 25-game win streak. Sta snapped by the Stanford Cardinal, and Arizona State had a 20-game win streak stopped <laughs> by the Stanford Cardinal. So unique. And it's like since that series, many in the Bruin community feel like they just haven't hit their stride back yet. Yeah, very strange how both of these teams sitting at the top of the conference, right, in terms of their ranking and what they've been able to do, both kind of stumbling their toe a little bit up in Palo Alto against the card. That's to the right side. Acuna's right there. Second out of the inning. That one was a little bit easier. <laughs> I just love that her face is the same for both catches. <laughs> same, same expression. All business. She was also among those top 25 finalists for softball player of the year. They've whittled that down to 10. She is not among them, but really speaks volumes when they're looking so much at Arizona State. Seneca Kuro is the number six hitter. the redshirt sophomore out of Barona, California. Off speed, strike call. Back to back. Lopez is not afraid to go back to back. I've, even, I've seen her go three times in a row. It's just such a tough pitch to stay in your legs on. As a hitter, you almost have to sit on it, which is something that rarely, rarely you don't tell yourself to do. the senior at a Stevenson's Ranch, California. Harper is one of those hitters who has come alive in Pac-12 play. She's batting 279 overall, but 359 in Pac-12 play. Yes. That's a gamer. I feel like for her standards, started the season a little bit slow, but has found her way as of late, and it tells you the quality of hitter when your batting average is improving and you're in conference. So it's just a good sign for Coach Ford to, to have her be getting better at peaking at the right time, especially this time of year. Two and one to McKenna Harper. She also had a home run in game two versus Cal. In game one, went two for three with three RBI. To the right side, Washington, the foot race to first and gets the first out. Nice to see Kinsley back at first consistently the last couple of games for the Bruins. Injured her hand earlier this season. Hallie Harger playing second base steps in. Her father Jeff is the hitting coach as she fouls that back. And what a hitting coach he is with his team battling for tops and batting average, slugging percentage, on-base percentage. 
she has actually earned her way consistently into the starting lineup for the Sun Devils. I gotta go dig into some stats and find out how many daughters are playing for a parent in, in college, in Division I. Just very unique and of course, is a senior that has another year to play. COVID senior, if you will. Goes after the rise ball. She's out of Hanford, California, transferred from Boise State. And she is a great story of perseverance. It's her battles with cancer and coming back and really getting back into the swing of elite softball. Ball is popped up foul. They are the sizzling Sun Devils. <laughs> These are just video game numbers. One of the best offensive teams in the nation. Two home runs a game. It's crazy. The one two pitch to the right side. Have you seen a team, because Oklahoma, obviously, they have drawn a lot of attention. They've got only one loss, and their long ball has drawn a lot of eyeballs. Have you seen a team in the Pac-12 with this much firepower like Arizona State? Very similar last year, Arizona State was, was that team with the home run numbers. But to me, last year, it was coming from less people, if that makes sense. So I think there's a lot more athletes that are in on the action this year to get those home run numbers back up at the top of the pack like they were last season. And I think it's a credit to Coach Harger like you were talking about. He's the hitting coach for Arizona State. Sun Devils had 95 home runs last year. That was the most since 2013. Yeah. Off speed pitch got her. Fourth strikeout already for Megan Faremo. The first strikeout on an off-speed pitch. I think this is going to be huge for Faremo to have that something slow to slow down these potent power hitters. Jessica Puck, one of three seniors. She is a graduate student, technically, out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and the transfer from Old Miss. Strike one to Jessica Puck. To the right side, gonna be a battle, got her! Anna Vines quickly with the release. Having Gets to add on the stadiums because of the popularity of the sport. Megan Faramo is pretty popular in the circle. She is set to lead off the third for UCLA. A 2.43 hitter. She's a redshirt junior out of Oceanside, California. Kenzie, you pitched. What are your feelings of your pitcher hitting in 99 degree heat in this three game series. I'm all good with it as long as she doesn't dive into home <laughs> head first like she did earlier this year. <laughs> Chopper back to Lopez and she'll throw to first for the first out of the inning. Yeah, Farima also gives another righty option for UCLA, which is a team that's very heavy with left handed hitters. And so I think just coming off the bench, some options there, going with the righty and Faremo to kind of balance out the hitters of Anna Vines, Kelly Gooden, Kinsley Washington, and, and so on. Speaking of Anna Vines, she is the number eight hitter for UCLA. Thinks about the bunt, but that goes foul. Vines, a red shirt junior out of Temecula, California.
Yeah, when Lopez has a, a left-handed hitter, she's able to work that curveball away a little bit more, just kind of opens up that pitch more so when a righty standing in the box, it takes it away a little bit. Doesn't mean you can't throw it, but just that movement, that sweeping curve isn't isn't there. The potential is not there as much. That pitch right there. Got her. Third strikeout for Lindsay Lopez and the second out of this inning. Just watch the movement and imagine if there was a right handed hitter there, it would hit her, right? So it just changes things for lefty lefty matchup. It's a huge advantage. Kelly Gooden steps in, the number nine hitter for the Bruins, and then the top of the order. Gooden, the redshirt junior out of Seal Beach, California, and modern day high school. Gooden puts down a bunt. Lopez is going to have to make a quick throw, not in time. And Gooden is a two-out base runner. This is such a good bunt here from Kelly Gooden. Because Lindsay Lopez is a left-handed pitcher, and if your first baseman, Sid Sanders, is going to stay back, that's a very tough play for Lopez to go get. I think maybe even with a clean throw, I think Gooden beats that out. Trisha Ford is coming out to talk to the first base umpire, Ron Burkhart. Do you think she's saying she was inside? She was in fair territory, got hit, and she should be out? Yeah, quite possibly could be the only argument I see at this point. And one of the things that coaches say is run in foul territory. Because if you are hit, it, catchers purposefully will throw it at you if you're in fair territory. I think everyone's going to stay as is. Are you seeing some barbecue smoke, or is this just a game? <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> the temperatures are making the field smoke a little bit. <laughs> so that is the first hit off Lindsay Lopez. They are going to give her a hit, and that brings up the top of the lineup, Kinsley Washington. I'm okay with that being a hit. I think if Lopez somehow makes that play, it's like the most amazing play ever. And I think with the speed of Gooden down the line, I think she would have beat it out. Washington ground out to first her first time up. She was a first team all NFCA region last year. Chopper to short, Torres to first, got her. Home runs. That was a game that UCLA lost eight to zero, getting run ruled for the first time in five years. Yeah, that game I think kind of shook up the nation a little bit. Like, wait, what? What's what's happening in Los Angeles? They're getting run ruled by Utah. Oh my goodness. Bella Loomis, the graduate student out of Chandler, Arizona, getting her first look at Faremo. We you talked know, to Kelly about that, that game last weekend, and she kind of said, you know, you could see the, the eight runs given up by the pitchers, but she was kind of putting it on the hitters. Like, we got to have our pitchers back a little bit better than we did last weekend. That ball's popped foul. Of course, Kelly Anaway Perez, a former catcher, goes right to the pitchers, and she's right. It's the pitchers who lead the pack in ERA and with Faremo lead in strikeouts, and, and you're absolutely right. She said it, it, it's not them. Even though Faremo got that loss, we've got to crack the offensive juggernaut. Yeah, this pitching staff has almost carried too much a load for me, watching them all season long. With all the shutouts that they've been able to put up, 18 of them, in fact, is a crazy number when you're competing in the Pac-12 and the offenses you're going up against. Strike three gets Bella Loomis for the fifth strikeout. So of nine batters faced, Faremo struck out five. 
And Lisa Fernandez is the pitching coach. They say she's relying more on analytics. And boy, wouldn't you love to have the former Olympian as, well, you had Mike Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> I would just love to be a fly on the wall for some of those pitcher to pitcher conversations. Alina Torres led off with the solo home run. How do you pitch Torres if you're Faremo? Well, it's interesting because Torres only saw two pitches <laughs> and they were both curveballs. So you can see Faremo right there trying to throw something off speed to the power hitting Torres. And that was the pitch that Torres hit out. That one a little bit better located more inside. And Framo throws a lot of backdoor curves. And if you watch where Torres stands in the box, she's pretty open and off of the plate. You can see there's a lot of space inside there. So if you're going to go in, you've got to go tight. Right there. It's exactly where you want. This is what she was able to do on this pitch, that backdoor curve. But you can see that one was a little bit more over the white. And when you have a hitter as a right-handed hitter that's off of the plate, a ball that's on the white inside is like down the middle to them. And that's why you saw that hit go dead center. Torres now tied for second in home runs for the Sun Devils. With 13. A leadoff hitter to be tied for second in home runs. That shows you the firepower they come armed with. She's going to try and take second base, and she does. Alina Torres gets the double and is another runner in scoring position for the Sun Devils. Torres gets two looks at this off-speed pitch here from Framo, and you can see it drift coming back over the heart of the plate. But Torres, credit her, stays in her legs, able to just throw her barrel at it. Good effort out there in left field. Kelly Gooden keeping it in front. And Torres able to leg it out. And Torres has just moved ahead of Sid, Sid Sanders as the hits leader for Arizona State, as looks like we might get a pinch runner for Torres. And we will. Jordan Van Hook. Yanni Acuna steps in, had some great plays in right field to rob a few Bruins of some hits. She struck out her first at bat. after the rise, strike one. I think Faremo has one of the best rise balls in the nation. What makes it so good? It's just a combination of the spin that she gets, but plus the velocity. It's like 70 miles an hour up at your eyes. It's just so hard to catch up to. You're going to be late on it a lot. And it's definitely her best pitch, so to me, it's how does she set up that rise ball? You know, she's taller than Fernandez, but a lot of her pitches remind you of Fernandez. And she had a pretty fierce rise ball back in the day. Acuna fouls that back. I feel like we're going to get a ball here soon in the press box. Got to be on alert. Should have brought my glove. It's all right. You got me covered if one comes up? You bet. Okay. You bet. Awesome. The 0-2 pitch. Not biting up there. Frame of six foot, which has those long levers, which allows her to get a lot of speed with those pitches. And she really uses it very well. Very efficient in her mechanics. Incredibly strong. And it's the leg drive out of the circle. That ball well 
hit. Gone! Two-run home run for Yanni Acuna. And the Sun Devils take a 3-0 lead in the bottom of the third. Just relentless with the offense. These top five hitters in the lineup here for ASU are so lethal. And this is a one-two pitch. It's a changeup. Not a bad spot. It's low. It's a little bit white. But credit Acuna stays in her leg, sees it deep, able to get enough of it over the head of Kuro out in right field. Hands up for good reason. And credit Torres in front of her for being on base for that moment because this is a team that's going to get their home runs. But if you have people on base, it's where it starts to separate things because solo home runs can kind of keep the game within check. You start getting two run home runs, three run home runs. That's where you start to see the separation. And that's why you see Arizona State with how many run rule wins they've had all season long. Speaking of home runs, Sid Sanders steps in. She is the home run leader for the Sun Devils with 17. She had a single in her first at bat. The daughter of a minor league baseball player Tracy Sanders, who she credits with a lot of her development in the batter's box. <laughs> oh, and two to Sid Sanders. The rally continues for the Sun Devils. Sometimes it's really hard to hit behind a home run and try and get that momentum back up for your team. Well, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Sydney Sanders. She's the best hitter on this potent lineup. Legging it out for a double, had a single in her first at bat. So two for two, the freshman just so consistent for Coach Ford all season long. The 12th double in the season for Sid Sanders, and it looks like we might have a pitching change for the Bruins. They are going to, she is responsible for Sanders on second base. Jasmine Hill struck out her first at bat. Goes after the first pitch to the right side. And there goes Hill in a rundown at first. Nobody is at second throw home safe! Sanders pushes across the fourth run. And the Sun Devils are on top, 4-0 here in the bottom of the third. You think Arizona State wants to come out and, and send a message in game one? First pitch, Jazz Hill ready to go. And I love this, trying to create a little something happening on the base path with her speed. But to me, in center field, Maya Brady needs to come in and cover second base. No one was, was there, Credit Hill, for recognizing that, making something happen, and the speed of Sanders able to score another run. Just a base hit. A 4-0 lead, and the Sun Devils aren't done yet. Jasmine Rollin will face Shaw. She struck out her first time up. Fouls that back. Uh, you look at Foremo's effectiveness. I mean, she struck out five of nine. Yes. And then it seemed like the second time through the order, the Sun Devils were making some adjustments. Yeah, and to me it was kind of her 0-2 pitches that were getting hit, which is kind of strange. She was getting ahead, and then the balls were just too much around the heart of the plate. And 
I mean, it's it's no secret. This is an offensive team. They're going to swing. Two strikes, doesn't matter. They're going to have the same approach that they do on the first pitch. They want their hacks. So as a pitcher, you have to recognize that and expand the plate from the first pitch. I loved pitching to teams that were free swingers and, and going into the box, wanting to get their home runs in because it kind of opens, thing opens things up for you to kind of let your ball run and, and pitch off of the plate versus trying to throw strikes because maybe they're a little bit more patient or forcing you to do some things. to the senior Jasmine Rollin. Jasmine Hill is on second base. Shaw is the first lefty in the UCLA lineup since Paige McDuffie in 2017. Boy, that pitch was good. They got her. Second out of the inning on a great pitch by Lauren Shaw. It's a really nice look at a changeup. You could see kind of fooled Rollin a little bit. Her legs were completely up. She wasn't in her legs at all and floats in, floats over. I thought the pitch before with her backdoor curve could have been strike three as well. McKenna Harper, ground out to first, her first time up, has been part of this hit parade for Arizona State. How difficult is it to come from Big Ten country in Iowa and come game ready into the Pac-12? for Lauren Shaw. I feel like maybe it's just a little bit more of a, a culture change than anything. I think ball is still gonna be ball, but like you're talking about Midwest to West Coast, playing with different people and she's a Midwest kid, so it's not like she's from LA or from Southern California and has played with, you know, some of these players in high school or in clubs. So it, you know, kind of a, a strange fit if you look at it on paper, but I think if you ask UCLA and you ask Coach Anyway Perez, it's been a great fit. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Inside. And UCLA hasn't had a left-handed pitcher in quite some time. Last one, if I'm racking my brain correctly, would be Paige McDuffie. That was quite a while ago. It was around when I played, so I can say it was a while ago. <laughs> Got her. Well, that will do it. And the hitters talking about their strategy coming in. Are they going to sit early in the count? Be a little, little more aggressive? Strike one called to Brianna Perez. Perez's average against lefties is almost 70 points higher than it is against righties. 448 against lefties, 371 against righties. That's well, so strange <laughs> to me. <laughs> it's so strange. And there are a couple on this UCLA team that just do better with lefties. Washington is another, Vines, Wiz, who is on deck. You think this is their time to respond. When you are facing the Bruins second time through the lineup, do you unveil another pitch? That's when it always gets interesting because if you're grooving, I would just kind of stay where I'm at, stay in the game plan until they start to show you something a little bit different. And then as soon as you get that, that first sniff of something different, then you can talk about, okay, let's bring out a different pitch. Let's show our drop or let's throw a change up later in the count instead of earlier. So it's 
that's the that's the part I miss about playing. I don't miss the, the physical parts, but I just kind of miss that competitive chess match that mentally you're kind of talking about with your pitching coach and you're feeling with your catcher and you're reading the hitters. That ball is well hit off the fence and a leadoff double for Brianna Perez. Well, the average against the lefties <laughs> going up a little bit here. This is not a bad pitch here from Lopez. It's a curve that's low. Perez just doesn't pull off on it. Keeps her head down, sees it deep, hits it exactly where it's supposed to be. Too much speed. She could almost jog into second base there on that hit. First runner in scoring position for the Bruins, and that will bring up Delaney Wiz, who struck out her first time up. Wiz, another one of those hitters that's 550 versus lefties, 337 versus righties. Lopez feels like she should get some strikes that she was not she was getting earlier and she's not getting now she's More deliberate in her walk back behind the rubber Off speed caught at short throw to second not in time So Torres gets the line drive But can't double up Perez at second Kelly and away Perez talking sing things over with Eddie Cooper. Do you think she's seeing a legal pitch or? You know, I wish I knew. <laughs> Going away. What could we be talking about? Love the conversation over at second base between Perez and Torres, two of the best shortstops in the nation. Just having a good time, talking some ball. <laughs> it's a good little moment here. All friends in the Pac-12. Maya Brady, well hit ball to right field, but robbed of a hit by Acuna. Trying to push the Bruins' first run across. Brady tied as the leader in RBI with 37 for the Bruins. Maya Brady. Four strikeout for Lopez. And the first strikeout on her rise ball. I talked about this earlier. She doesn't use this pitch a lot. So when she throws it in an 0-2 count as a hitter, you're not really expecting it. You see something coming up. It looks meaty. It keeps riding through the zone. And the key with that rise ball, it was in on the hands to a powerful bat in Maya Brady. Off speed, strike one to Alyssa Garcia. They said she went. Garcia flew out to right in the second. Jessica Puck trying to keep Perez honest at second, taking a big lead out there. On deck, Seneca Kuro. Well, this would be some big momentum for Lopez. Not that she needs any, but you give up the leadoff double in Perez, and you have to face the three, four hitters in Delaney Wiz and Maya Brady, who are just household names at this point, and two non productive outs. Lopez talks about 
how she lacked confidence and that Trisha Ford actually worked with her in her confidence, reading books, starting to really believe that she could be that elite Division I pitcher for an elite team in the Pac-12. There's a single up the middle, and here will come the first run across for UCLA, and we've got a 4-1 ball game. RBI, Garcia, and Brianna Perez ties Natasha Watley for most runs scored in a career. As Perez pushes the first run across for the Bruins. Wait, can you say that again? Tied Natasha Watley? The <laughs> Natasha Watley, the Olympian All-American Natasha Watley. In runs scored? In r career runs scored. Wow. 252. If you're mentioned in a, in a sentence with Natasha Watley, I'm just going to give you the goat. <laughs> goat you up. Because <laughs> that's a big deal. I mean, she's been on base a bunch. <laughs> and what a class act Natasha Watley is. Seneca Kuro's trying to keep this rally alive with two outs. To the right side. Harger throws to first, but not before the Bruins can push a run. The Sun Devils set to face Lauren Shaw, who came in in relief for Megan Faremo. Kelly Harger struck out her first time up. Strike called. We mentioned that Harger had transferred from Boise State. She played 15 games in her first season at Arizona State, starting eight of them, and hit 364. Rounder foul. I'm talking about Harger, Coach Ford, she says that she's like a second coach for them. Kind of a defensive specialist. Playing second base, doing a really nice job, but like we talked about earlier, coach's kid. So it brings that maybe level-headedness or just a little bit of a different voice. That ball to center field. Brady over her head. Harger headed to second. The throw, safe. Lead-off double for Hallie Harger. It's an off-speed pitch here. Harger does a great job. A little bit of a misplay out in center field. You can see Brady was having a tough time, maybe with the shade of the field and the sun, taking a couple of steps in. I don't know if she gets to that with a pure drop step anyway. Harger hit that really well off the warning track. Big high five there from Dad. You love it. Second double of the year for Harger. Savannah Price in to run for Harger. <laughs> Jessica Puck, who leads the team in sacrifices, will step in. On deck, Bella Loomis, the number nine hitter, and then the top of the order for the Sun Devils. <laughs> Foul. I feel like everybody on UCLA knew she was going to try and get that yes. ball down. Yep. Especially bunting in her first at bat with no one on base. But you see her going to a sneaky bunt there instead of a sacrifice. Trying to see if she can get herself on base as well. Wiz is back deep at third. In fact, the whole UCLA infield is back. There's the ball down. Play at first by Washington, and the runner advances to third successfully. So Price now at third, and the sacrifice successful for Jessica Puck. <laughs> Senior getting 
hyped up for her sock bunt. You love it. Would have been a bonus in that situation if Puck gets on base there. Lead off, lead off double, kind of down in the lineup here in the 8-9 hole, trying to get another insurance run 60 feet away. Bella Loomis looking for her first hit in this game. She struck out in the third in her first at bat. Elena Torres is on deck, who is two for two in this game. Kelly Inouye Perez was telling us in terms of hydration, she was having the team send her pictures, selfies of them hydrating during the week <laughs> to get ready to come to Tempe. Ball fouled back. We started the game at 99 degrees. It is 98 degrees right now. And now we're in 20 minutes in. Yeah, I, I can say playing in the state of Arizona as a player, we loved it when it was hot because <laughs> we knew our opponent was going to come in and be uncomfortable. Unless our opponent, of course, was Arizona State, then it was kind of just, okay, let's play ball and not worry about it because this kind of weather we're used to, we practice in it all day. But the long sleeves, like, look at the long sleeves. Did you guys wear long sleeves too? Um, I did a practice to avoid the tan lines, <laughs> um, but not when I played. <laughs> Speed. Strike three called. Just froze Bella Loomis. Shaw can throw this pitch any count. It's got that curve movement to it as well. So you can see Loomis was kind of backing off of it, pulling off just so slightly. Third strikeout for Shaw in relief. Do you walk Elena Torres? I don't think you walk her because Acuna is just as good behind her, but you've just got to be sharp on your pitches. Strike one. This is the part of the lineup for, for pitchers that it's tough. <laughs> There's no breathing room from Torres all the way down to Rollin in the five hole. You're talking double digit home runs. And the averages in the 300s. It's a chopper, it's gonna have to be a quick throw, and that is made by Delaney Wiz. Great play by the senior. These two teams are fighting for right now. Of course, they're both, in terms of their RPI and rankings, will be in the NCAA tournament, no doubt about it, but you get that, get that banner, right? And you get that, hey, we're already taking care of business. We're gonna be in the NCAA tournament. There's a lot on the line this weekend. Megan Faremo stays in the offensive part of the Bruin lineup for her bat. Ground out her first time up. But yeah, to your point, Kenzie, it, it, everybody gets a chance to host, and it's why Kelly Inouye Perez is talking about, hey, we're looking at getting a new stadium or an add-on to their stadium. And Chelsea Spencer at Cal says, yeah, we're working in our stadium as well. So it's creating a lot of buzz in the conference. You bet. Every coach that I've talked to has said nothing but good things about it. They're just anxiously waiting for, for it to roll out and for it to get going and for it to happen. And I know the softball fans in the Pac-12 are excited as well. It's just a reason to come out, see a ton of great ball, cheer on your team. Just kind of get that postseason feel a week earlier than normal. I think there's a lot to be said that when you're playing some of the elite teams, because look how many Pac-12 teams are ranked or have been ranked, maybe all but three this season of the nine. It, it's a great way to prepare for postseason when you're playing the best of the best. <laughs> Jessica Puck thought it was strike three. And home plate umpire Eddie Cooper said, nope. Farima stays in the box with a full count. Yeah. 
That ball well hit. And through the glove of Acuna for Ramo going into second head first. And she leads off the inning with a double. And man, she is fired up. You asked me earlier if I was comfortable having my starting pitcher batting with the temperatures at 100 degrees, and I said yes, because she can hit, but I'm a little worried if she dives at first and she shows it off right here on this double. I'm sure every coach in that UCLA dugout is just holding <laughs> their breath watching her do that, but she jumps up like a pro. She's fired up for her team. She knows this ball game is still within reach, even though she's not in the circle. And just showing off her athleticism as a whole. Not only can she contribute in the circle, but she can get it done at the plate. Love, love, love the enthusiasm of Faremo. That was her third double of the season. Ball to center. Great catch. Jasmine Hill robs Anna Vines of a hit. Little shoestring action here in center field. Jazz Hill co covers so much ground so well. Yeah, that's a nice play out there in center field. <laughs> Kelly good in squares to bunt. Trying to push across Lauren Carter, the pitch runner on second. Bunt foul. You can see Lopez, she's just pitching good in outside, kind of knowing that that drag bunt is her game and something that we expect her to do right now. And Sydney Sanders, the first baseman for Arizona State, is playing back. So if you're a left-handed pitcher against a left-handed hitter, who's probably going to drag bunt, you really don't want to give her anything inside. Infield is in for the Sun Devils. There is one out, two strikes on Gooden. Ball fell back. Top of the order, Kinsley Washington on deck. I always think Eric. UCLA is so good to get three looks at Lopez. It feels like it's just a matter of time. Chopper, quick throw, not in time. Gooden is safe at first. Carter moves up to third. And the Bruins have another runner in scoring position. And how about the spark at the bottom of the lineup for Kelly Gooden? Her second at bat, second hit. And look where that pitch was, down by her shoes and just letting her barrel do the work. Of course, playing at Arizona and Arizona State here in this uh, type of weather where the humidity is not really a thing. The dirt's always so hard, and that's a slapper's paradise. And so you just put a little bit of that barrel on the ball, let it bounce up in the air, and then you just watch her run. So top of the order now steps in to face Lopez for a third time. Kinsley Washington looking for her first hit of this game. Wasn't it your coach, Mike Andrea, who made a living off the slap and won multi NCAA championships? Dirt's just a little bit harder out here in the Southwest, for sure. Runners going. There's a hit and run. Throw to first by Lopez. So Gooden moves up to second. Carter stays at third. And Washington is out. And if you're UCLA, this is where you need to strike. This is where you want to get back in this ball game, this situation. Yes, two outs, but the heart of the lineup. The offense goes through these next two hitters in Bree Perez and Delaney Wiz on deck. 
off-speed foul. Perez doubled and has the only run scored for the Bruins. And isn't this where Kelly Inouye Perez says they're going to punch and we're going to punch back? Foul back. Lopez is ahead of Perez. 0 oh, and 2. touched on this earlier, has kind of been in and out of the lineup at times, but this year really has been cemented as every day. Right field is her spot. You're going to be batting at the top of the lineup. And she has produced. You know, it's fun to watch her, Torres, and Sanders all compete against one another for top average in the Pac-12. Yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of team competition there, like you're talking about. Okay, you hit a home run, now I'm going to hit a home run. <laughs> I can't let you have all the glory, right? And if you're UCLA, you strand two runners that last inning with perhaps your hottest hitter in Perez up. Mentally, what does that do to you? How do you stay, okay, the fight is in us, we just got to shut down this hot-hitting Arizona State team? I think you look at the positives that they got two runners on in scoring position is something that they haven't been able to do. But on the flip side, it's the momentum shifter, right? You saw Arizona State fire up off of the field and big huddle, and that leads into offense. And for UCLA, it's you know, kind of a gut punch, like, dang, that was our chance. Of course, game's not over. A lot of game and inning left, but, you know, you have an All-American in Brie Perez, and Lopez got the best of her. Well, you look at those faces on the Bruin dugout. They, 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 they it's like they don't know what hit them, and it's usually them who are pummeling the competition. And it, they're trying to solve their offensive woes. Again, beating Utah two games to one, but they got run rolled in game three. Their wins against Utah were 1-0, 1-0. And then they lost 8-0. Two two to Acuna. To the right side. This is going to be extra bases. Acuna leads off the fifth with a double. Her second of the game and 16th of the season. Check that, her first of the game. And this is just a, a two-strike pitch. She's in swing mode. She's ready to get after, and it drifts over the heart of the plate. Cannot give that pitch to as good a hitter like Acuna is, a ton of speed, legs it out easy. 15 doubles is a bunch. She now leads the team in doubles as Sid Sanders steps in, who is two for two on the day with a run scored. It's relentless. If, if you don't get Acuna, here comes Sanders. If you don't get Sanders, behind her is Hill. Yep. <laughs> to the right side. Washington will glove it. And Acuna will move up 60 feet to third base. And that's what I've noticed for Arizona State tonight. Even when they've had outs, their outs have been productive. They've had people on base and able to have a sack bunt here or a right side ground ball there. I'm sure Sydney Sanders is saying, all right, dang it, give me that pitch again. I'll square it up a little bit better, but hey, it's productive. Jasmine Hill, one for two, with a single in the third. 
She is the number four hitter. And sees a change up for strike one. Love that pitch there from Shaw. Kind of has a little bit of a unique delivery. So as a hitter, it might throw you off just a little bit. It's not super smooth with her windup as maybe most pitchers are. Kind of comes out of it. A little bit jerky there with her arm. That ball is well hit and out of here. Two run home run for Jasmine Hill. And the Sun Devils take a 6-1 lead over UCLA in the bottom of the fifth. Well, she saw the changeup and was sitting hard. Not a bad pitch here from Shaw, but Hill was ready for it. And we've seen three home runs in this game. That one was the biggest blast for the Sun Devils today. And Tracy, I think they are having a team competition. It's kind of anything you can do, I can do better right now for this squad offensively. These hitters just getting after it. They now have 87 team home runs. Remember, they had 95 last year. That was their most since 2013. They are getting very close to surpassing last year's home run total. As they do some housekeeping there, in right field. But it is a 6-1 lead. And Jasmine Rollins steps in, in, the number five hitter, the DH for Arizona State. Solo home run in the first. She lays that down. Good throw by Shaw to get Rollin by a step. Solo home run in the first by Torres. A two-run home, two run home run in the third by Acuna. And a two-run home run here in the fifth by Hill. Your first, second, and fourth hitter have home runs, and your home run leader has yet to strike in Sid Sanders. McKenna Harper looking for her first hit of this game. speed. UCLA were the 2019 NCAA champs. They won the Pac-12 last year with Rachel Garcia and Bubba Nichols. Ball is foul. <laughs> hey, that was a great effort. He's going, Good job. yeah, he's going outside of his playing zone over there. Expanding his turf defensively. Would have been a great catch, yes. But not one he's expected to make. Keeps a smile, that's, <laughs> that's all the attitude. Trying to give these fans something to cheer about here. I appreciate it. Kelly Inouye Perez says, you know, a lot of people talk about us last year. Of course, they went to the College World Series losing to Oklahoma. Garcia had to essentially finish it out there, but Bubba Nichols, they moved on, and she says, everybody wants to talk about them, but we are totally a new team trying to figure out who is going to take the leadership role and pull this team up offensively. And it's funny that that's even a sentence because you're talking about a senior class that has a natty. Has been there, done that. And so a lot of time for them to, you know, round into form. And we're just talking here in the, in the first game of this series, but just kind of reflecting on where they've been the last couple of weeks and, and how they started the season because they started with fireworks. Yeah. 
ball right side. Yeah, Kelly in a way, Perez last year's coach of the year in the Pac-12. And to your point, UCLA swept Arizona, swept Washington to open the Pac-12, and then later on swept Oregon and Oregon State. And those raised a lot of eyebrows. But hey, you knocked off Washington and Arizona? It's ball four. Yeah, they're still winning games. <laughs> it's just, you know, they're maybe not as dominant as maybe we were expecting them to be. But it's still there. It's going to come. First walk given up for Lauren Shaw. So McKenna Harper on first for Hallie Harger, who doubled in her last at bat. Harger at 271 average, tooth of right side. Vines with the throw to first for the third out of the inning. For six runs for ASU, five hits, one run for UCLA. And that last inning for Arizona State does nothing but good things for Lindsey Lopez in the circle. Things were getting a little tight. Last couple of innings, and then your team gives you two extra runs of insurance, and you just are allowed as a pitcher to take a little bit more of a breath. Do you do you really take a breath in there if you've got a, a five-run lead? Yes, five runs is much different than three. I mean, that's you're looking at a couple of home runs, multiple people on base versus just maybe one or two. So grounder to second, Harger gets the first down. Yeah, anything below four is, you know, okay, that could be an inning, could be a grand slam, right? It could be one swing, let's limit the base runners, but anything four plus, it's good living. And especially she's been feeling good. It's one thing if she hasn't been throwing her best stuff and has kind of been surviving a little bit, but she's been thriving. She's kept the ball low. Changeup has these UCLA hitters and fits. She has thrown 72 pitches here in the sixth. That's a pretty efficient pitch count. It's a great number. Maya Brady looking for her first hit of this game. This team works with former UCLA alum and professional baseball player Don Slott. And he breaks down their swing and, and helps build it back up. Brady, of course, having a phenomenal year last year, all American stature. And everybody wants the book on Maya Brady. One, one. well hit and Brady is going to go into second with a double Maya Brady her first hit of this game and is a one out base runner six doubles on the season for Maya it's a really nice piece here just gets a curveball sees it so deep hits it over the head of Harper in left field Plays it nice off the wall, but Brady has a ton of speed out of the left-handed batter's box. And you'd love to see that from Maya Brady. Ball's popped up to the left side. Torres is going to call it and gloves it for the second out of the inning. You know, credit Lopez. She gets Delaney Wiz who led off the inning, and, and that's not an easy accomplishment. Wiz has yet to get a, a hit in this game, and she, in addition to Perez, have been the hottest hitters for the Bruins. So 
She is really tackling this Bruin lineup. Seneca Kuro. Take strike one. Yeah, and the opportunities have, have been there for UCLA, especially the last three innings, have had runners in scoring positions in the fourth, fifth, and now sixth, but nothing really to show for it other than the one run. And so all the credit in the world goes to Lopez. She's been able to shut the door. And to me, it's been how she's been keeping the ball low. Has seven ground ball outs, five strikeouts. Not really a strikeout pitcher, so for her to have five is a great game for her. I think if you ask her, she'll tell you she's just as comfortable just rolling some ground balls to her middle infielders and keeping her pitch count low. Strike three. Well, they strand Maya. Yes. You don't give her a breather because you may see her again. You just let her finish out. Look, she's rolling. Don't mess with it. And don't mess with UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> and. You know, if you have a team like UCLA and you're holding them to just one run right now and you can kind of feel that the game's in control for Lopez, the last thing you want to do is switch it up and maybe get them excited. Like, okay, new look, we've been struggling against Lopez. Let's change our mindset a little bit. Puck is a fan favorite of head coach Trisha Ford. She loves how she handles the pitchers, especially Lopez. And she says she has such a great demeanor. And if you don't like Jessica Puck, well, then I've got a problem with you, says Trisha Ford. And of course, it's senior weekend, and Jessica Puck, one of those three seniors that they'll be honoring. and. Coach Ford has said it many a time, I wish we had more than one year with this young lady. I just come in and really made her mark in one short season. And I think that's so hard to do, but so incredible at the same time. How important that you as a, an All-American pitcher, how important is it to have that kind of synergy with your catcher? Oh, it's everything. And I think the fact that you bring in a senior leader in Jess Puck, and you have a young staff. I mean, with Lopez, Schold, and Mac Morgan, you're looking at three underclassmen in terms of experience. And just someone to come in and steady the ship. Also, also worth noting, they had to replace Maddie Hackbarth, an All-American catcher. And it's one thing to go from an All-American catcher maybe and, and hand things off to a freshman, seeing the Pac-12 for a first time, but Jess Puck is a player that's been there, done that, especially playing in the SEC. So she has that experience coming in. Full count pitch up to the right side. Anna Vines calls for it, and she gloves it for the first out of the inning. The lights have come on here at Farrington Stadium as nighttime settles in, almost 7 o'clock. It has been a warm one here. 96 degrees as Trisha Ford looks like she's going to make a substitution for Bella Loomis. Miley McLemore will come in and pitch it. McLemore had a pitch hit home run against Cal last weekend. She goes after the first pitch. Delaney Wiz throws across and gets the second out. That'll bring up the top of the order. Alina Torres. It's a nice little look right there. Could be some local media. You know, it's fun to watch these athletes here at Arizona State become fan favorites that everybody wants to come see in Farrington Stadium. It's, I feel like maybe a changing of the guard at the top. You bet. I mean, just look around and how many little 
ball players do you see walking around, even in their uniform, repping their, their little league team or their club team? And that's what it's all about. Dreams of being a Sun Devil, with all due respect to a Wildcat alum. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I mean, I, I grew up in the Hillenbrand stands down in Tucson, and it was, you know, such a fun thing to be a, a youngster with, you know, eyes so big and watching these players that look like they're eight feet tall and I want to be like them one day, just hang around the ballpark. Who do you remember watching the most? Well, I was 10 when Jenny Finch was in her prime. Whoa, okay. So <laughs> it's a pretty good time to be a, a Tucson 10-year-old, for sure. Wasn't too bad. Former All-American Jenny Finch. Yeah, there's a picture of me somewhere with her. And got like pigtails. <laughs> my, outfit's, my outfit's a hot mess. <laughs> it's one I treasure for sure. Three and one now. But it's funny because I've, after, you know, graduating, I've had girls that, you know, I maybe have met along the way and they show me pictures that they took with me when I was playing and now they're like grown up, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, what is happening? It's a circle of life. <laughs> Taken all the way is Alina Torres, strike two. See it, you can be it. Was Leah O'Brien on that team as well? Jenny Dalton, were they? A little, a little bit older, but yeah, Leah O'Brien, I remember when I was little watching her. She's one of my favorites at first base. Now Leah O'Brien of Nico, former Olympian. There's a grounder up the middle and a single for Torres. She is three for three on the day. Well, she started big, and she's kind of working her way back, right? So in the first, she had that home run, and then the third, she had a double. So now just putting things together with a single. So Torres is a two-out base runner. That brings up Yanni Acuna. Doubled and scored a run her last time up. Has the two-run home run in the third. That ball is popped up. Brady will glove it for out number three. So the Sun Devils strand a runner. Every single time. She's just been dialed in with a variety of pitches. It's been a curve, a change, and a rise. And UCLA has not been able to get comfortable offensively. Megan Faramo doubled her last time up. One of six UCLA hits. If the score stands and UCLA is held to one run, it will be just their third run scored in the past four games. And this is for the third best offense in the Pac-12. Strike call. Yeah, if you're UCLA and the game finishes as is, you don't want to panic too much. You don't want to make it bigger than it is because you know how talented you are and what you're capable of. I'm sure they'll have a, a simple talk about things, go back and watch some film, and then just come out tomorrow with a different game plan. But Kelly. In a way, Perez is probably one of the most competitive coaches. I mean, watching yes. her play as a catcher and then as an assistant coach to Sue Inquist, and now she's got the helm. She is phenomenal, and you know they will right size this. And speed. Oof. What do you think, Kenzie? <laughs> I have a big strike zone. I'm just going to start with that. <laughs> so. Yeah, maybe a little inside, but I like it. The three-two pitch to Faramo. Ball four. She lost her. 
Leadoff base runner. And a pinch runner will come in for Paremo. Lauren Hatch, the freshman, will come in to pinch run for Faremo. And Anna Vines will look to keep this offense going. Looking for her first hit in this game. How about Megan Faremo? Doesn't get the everyday start offensively in the lineup for UCLA, but gets on base twice like her and I, I could see why Kelly in a way Perez leaves her in the offensive lineup. Strike call to Anna Vines. Crowd getting excited. This is a first of a three game series between the two top teams right now in the Pac-12. Right now, Arizona State has the lead with UCLA right behind them. Lopez, her combination of her backdoor curve inside the lefties and then her change up away to me is just so lethal. And it's two completely opposite pitches. <laughs> it's a hitter. It's just very frustrating. Ball. Explain from a lefty what a backdoor curve does to a lefty. Yeah, so that pitch right there, curve, kind of a traditional curve sweeping across the plate, or backdoor is going to actually start at you as a left handed batter and look like it's going to hit you until the last second. It's going to break over the heart of the plate. And to hit that pitch, you've, you've got to be early, you've got to be looking ahead. And then to sit on a changeup right there, you've got to see it late. So it's two completely different looks at, for your eyeballs. And hitting is all about timing. And Lopez is throwing off the timing for these UCLA hitters. That's a good a changeup as you're going to see right there. Seven strikeout for Lopez. Kelly Gooden, who's been a hot hitter for the Bruins, two for two, lays down the bunt. Quick throw to first, they got her by a step. Bella Loomis with the gun at third base. Another senior on senior weekend, and Bella Loomis has been nails her entire career in the infield for Arizona State. Whether it's been at second base, shortstop, at third base the last couple of seasons, I think she's one of the best defenders in the Pac-12 Conference. Bruins down to their final out. Washington with a runner on second base. Here in the top of the seventh. Lopez, 93 pitches. And the fans are getting excited here in Tempe. If you were to guess what percentage of off-speed pitches Lopez has thrown to the Bruins in game one? 50. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it does seem like a lot. Yep. It's very effective. Inside out swing. She got it. Torres robs Washington of a hit, and that will do it.